Welcome in, everybody. Tony Dix, Alcatello, Dave Glackner, Wind Daily Sports. It's Major League Baseball season. We're not going to talk about what happened in the Super Bowl. We're going to go right in to Major League Baseball. You saw our first one where we talk about Roto. We're going to do a series of videos. We thought today's going to be how to build an MLB DFS winning lineup. Um, you know, we're going to talk about everything. We're going to do NL previews, Major League Baseball previews overall, AL previews, stacks, you name it, leading up until March, Dave, to when we really dive into it. So, first of all, are you ready for baseball season? Can't wait. You know, that th those words, pitchers and catchers report, just – Sounded really good this week, Tone. I needed it this week. I needed some distraction. <laughs> and, uh, you know, knowing that the boys are down there, the boys of summer are getting ready for spring training. Um, it's really exciting. And you start to get ramped up now and start to realize all these pieces that you got back in December are now putting on your uniform. So it, it's really cool to watch this week. And I'm ready for baseball. Yeah, man. Listen, I mean, we, listen, we we ended in a storybook season. I, 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 we didn't get the win in Philadelphia, but you know, yeah. over overall, lot, lot of a great storylines going in to Major League Baseball. But and we're gonna get into that later. But but what everybody wants to know is how do we build these MLB winning lineups for DFS? Because baseball, to me, um, I, I still think basketball is the hardest. I said just because I so much movement. Right. Uh, but but I do like I love the the MLB lineups because I'm a big pitching guy. So let me ask you this right off the bat. Like when you're building these lineups, you know, are are you, you know, more, you know, are are, are you more focused on the pitching or you're more focused on the hitting, or does it just depend on the value of the overall number? Yeah, on most days I build my lineups around pitching. So meaning that I look at the two pitchers I want. Normally, at least a 1A and 1B. Sometimes I'll take a 1 and a, and a 2 in the mid-tier, depending on the, the day's slate. But um, I really want to build my lineups around pitching. I'll spend the money on pitching and then figure out how much I have for hitting and then start to spread it out. But once I know what pitchers I like, I, I'll probably build a player pool somewhere in the 5 to 6 range, right? And then try and mix my lineups between those 5 and 6. Sometimes I'll have you know, two top studs at pitchers. And sometimes I'll go one stud and I don't want to call him a dud, but definitely a mid tier. Um, but it all starts with pitching for me, especially on DraftKings where you have to have two starting pitchers. FanDuel gets a little different where it's one starting pitcher, a little bit different of a, a lineup construction, but on DK, no doubt about it. I start with pitching. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because, you know, it is a difference on FanDuel as opposed uh, to DraftKings, but you know what? I, I I have the same sentiments. Uh, the one thing I do, and I'll see if you agree. And again, just so you know, it, me and Dave may not agree on everything, right? Yeah. Everybody builds a lot differently, but I, the concepts are, are, are right there and, and you can kind of pick and choose. But um, number one, don't forget win big co where win daily sports, get your free week, get all signed up for the major league baseball season. You get your free week to preview, see everything we have. You know, we're going to have a ton of stuff going on with NBA prop models every day. We, I can't wait for the home run prop model. Uh, you know, I'm a big home run guy, home run prop guy. Can't wait for that. Um, you know, and again, win daily gold membership, five nine nine a week. So uh, what I will say about pitching is I get very hesitant to go into them top two, like nine plus thousand dollar guys. I, I I just get, I think, I feel like it really hamstrings my lineup. Uh, so what I tend to do is, again, everybody's different. I focus more on strikeouts more than anything. Uh, I, I'm looking at who's that highest K potential pitcher that I can get. So the one guy I always take, my 1A is going to be that absolute stud. Who's going to go to those six to seven innings? Because six to seven innings is a luxury nowadays in Major League Baseball, right? Who's going to give up the least amount of runs? And who's going to strike out the most? Give me that top guy. And then give me the guy who's going to strike out the most batters. That's what I want. I don't care if he does it in three innings. I don't care if he does it in five. But I want the guy who strikes out the most batters. is probably going to be in that... Six to sixty five hundred to seventy two hundred dollar range, and it gives me more money for my bats. Now, Dave, do you, do you focus more on one thing or the other, or you kind of you're just all one hundred percent complete pitcher? So, as far as pitching goes, I, I got one term I wrote in big caps: K's rule. And you're uh, absolutely <laughs> right. I mean, as much as we want the guys that can, you know, go seven or eight, like an Alcantara at times. I mean, he's awesome, and but he'll load up the K's at times too. So you want to actually look at other lineups as well as the K percentage. If we can get a K percentage of a pitcher over twenty percent, 
good. He's he's going to be a guy considered. Then I look at the lineups they're facing that day, and I tend to look at their splits and their overall K percentage as well. If I can get a good match of a lineup that strikes out 10, last year it was heavy lefties against Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, you They led the league at over a 30% clip of K rate against lefties. So you had to get there if you had the right lefty combo. So, yeah, Tony, I'm with you. K's ruled, but you have to take a few things into account. One is K percentage of the pitcher, and the other is the K whiff rate, K percentage, whatever you want. Uh, when you look at baseball reference, you can get into a bunch of other things and stats out there that you like um, to see what the other teams are doing. And don't just look at, you know, early in there, you have to look at season totals. But sometimes look at last seven to ten days as well and mix that in as a factor. Don't go all in on it. But a factor, because lineups change, you could have someone out for injury and you could have some bad players in that does help make your decision. So I'm with you. K's rule, and you got to get a guy that's going to strike out that day. And then you got to hope you get lucky on the second one. He's going to strike out as well. Luck is the thing. And K's rule, just like at a yeah. good, good old, uh, what was it in um, uh, Billy Madison, O'Doyle rules? O'Doyle oh, yeah, rules. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. That idiot. That was it. Oh man, but listen, it's a great point. Make sure you're you're following it. Make sure you, listen, don't dive too heavy into it. Like Dave says, look at the seven to ten, you know, trend, but at the same time, be focused on who they're playing as well. Look at you know, always look at all right, you know, they're playing if it's the Mets playing the Phillies, uh, and it's Max Scherzer. Let's see what the Phillies have done, you know, over the years to, to Max Scherzer. Are though and here's the thing, you may look at what have they done, but those, like Dave says, you might only have half those same players in that lineup. So yeah. you, you're already, you have to take that in perspective. Um, on the other side, Dave, offensively. Now, one thing I always say is I will never, ever, ever pay up for a catcher. That's just me. I just feel, and I get it. There, there's some really, listen, we have a good one in Philly and JT Romuto, but I just, when those numbers for a catcher hover that 5,000 mark, I'm yeah. like, oh, Hold on, man, because, you know, there's there's always another guy floating around that I can grab on that, you know, $3,000 cheap line, right? I love that angle. And catchers are the one position that's able to, I mean, has a chance to be pulled too late in the game just because, you know, they, they, they've done their work already, so they're losing a bat there. So I hear you, but one of the biggest terms, and you hear it all the time in fantasy sports, but particularly in baseball, it stacks, right? I mean, in football, yep. you're, when you're looking at a stack, you're looking at a quarterback-receiver combo. You might get lucky if you find out three per team you want to play in football. Basketball is a, a, a sport um, where the stats aren't correlated as much. You know, a guy is isolated, goes for a shot, gets his two. It's not because they passed on the ball and that guy gets the assist. They do sometimes, don't get me wrong. But in baseball, they're all correlative. So you really want to stack teams, stack players from a team. On DraftKings, you're allowed maximum five hitters per team. On FanDuel, four. Yahoo, if you play out there, it's six. So I really highly you know, advocate stacking a minimum of four per team that night that you're really like dialed into a team. And when you do stack that team, because what do we get? We get three base runners on. We hit a home run. Everybody scores a run. There's that RBI. How did they get on? All those stats t- tend to add up and pile up together. But some areas that I like, I like to look at pockets of a lineup tone, and you might as well, you know, the one through four area, one through five. Now you're not going to afford them all, but you know, maybe I can stretch out one through six and, and, and find four guys in there. And then I'll wrap it back around and say, okay, seven through two. Um, because now with the DH in the system, you, you get guys on base down the nine hole that really do help the one. Um, so those are some strategies. Definitely got to stack. I've even seen the strategy of in DK stack five. And then stack three, and there's your eight hitters. Do two team stacks, two pitchers, and you're off and going. I tend to like the five, two, one, um, maybe even sometimes the four, two, two. But um, the five, three is an interesting way to stack. Yeah, no, it is, and and that's the thing. That's I I love doing it. I'm I'm a big. I, you know, you'll hear me preach. Um, uh, this PPP line, right? Not OPP from Naughty by Nature. That's a 90s hip hop reference, but um, I'm a positive point production guy in baseball. And what I mean by that is, you know, once I get the pitchers elevated, which we talked about, once we figure out those stacks, and and, and again, for me, stacks is obviously what that what's that game that's going to have the most runs in it? What's that that team that's facing the more that you know the lesser pitcher that um the, the guy who's going to get rocked, right? I mean, obviously, I think that's a no brainer, but. What I also want to do is when I get down to the nitty gritty and I, you know, and I, I do a thing called the FFVP, uh, which is a fancy firebox value play. And what it is, is a guy that's going to be low owned 
and he's going to be under three thousand dollars that's going to get you ppp and that's positive point production and what i mean by that is i want a guy who's going to give me anywhere between three and seven points now you might say three to seven points listen we're talking about baseball here okay so a guy goes over four is is Listen, it's not out of the realm here when you're talking about a guy who's $2,000, $2,200. So if this guy gets one hit, one RBI, he already hit your PPP. That's positive point production. So what I'll do is I'll follow those guys, Dave, and be like, all right, let me see who I have here. Okay, you know what? His, you know, four of his last five games, he's at least given me two to three points a game. That's what I want. Two to three points at my lowest player in my lineup mm -hmm. is better than getting a zero on a guy who I think maybe he'll hit a home run. So after my stack, I look for the PPP, which is the FFBP. A lot of acronyms there, so pay attention. Um, and then and then that's how I continue to build, man, right? Um, Javon checking in. He says, I need that Expos hat. Always like to target pitchers who go up against strikeout and heavy offenses. If it's Hunter Green versus the Cubs, and talk Hunter Green, that's big it. K potential, right? That's why Javon's talking about it. He says, I remember catch a fire with Omar Oh, my God. Omar, Eric Haas, man. Eric Haas. Both guys were so cheap. Both, well, hey, right? Go ahead and talk about yeah. that, Dave. So my guy last year was Stephen Kwan earlier in the year from the Guardians that came out of nowhere. And then in the middle of the year, Vaughn Grissom from the Braves oh, came yes. up and, and plugged in the back that lineup. Those guys were in the sub-3K range a ton last year, Tony. You're right. That Those are the types. They win you in DFS, but they're also the one-offs. I don't need to – those are the ones I don't necessarily need to stack in line. I'd love to if I can find the right pieces. But when you right. can get an under 3K guy, you can then get those good stacks of the one through five hitters if he's your one off. So you can play both ways. You can They can be part of your stack or they can be your one offs and then help build your other stack. No, you're right. You're right. Adam checking in. What's up, Adam? He says Dave, cool hat. Everybody's liking the hat tonight, Dave. Yo, I the love it, man. Yo, let's just talk real You know, there was something about the Expos when us growing up. There were like three people in the stadium at all times. Yeah. Um, it was just you could hear everything. But that team they had in '94 when they set when the strike came, Pedro Martinez, um, Vladimir Guerrero. I think yep. Marquise Grissom was on that team. Marquise back then. Grissom. What was uh was a uh, Tim Wallach on that team I in '94? Yeah, and I think my boy the Hawk was gone. It, but he might yeah, have I think the, there. Dawson. I think the Hawk was gone. Yeah, but um, you know they were fun and um. You know, they had it that they got the strike the worst because they were always terrible and they finally had a team. Finally yes. had a team. And then the uh, strike. Listen, came. I, I love watching those. I, that's a that's an NL East. And all that's an yeah. NL East thing. Javon says, remember when Michael yes. Harris was undervalued? And I I wrote Rookie him a couple year. home run props, man. Like plus nine hundred, plus seven hundred. I mean, he was he was fantastic. And he also mentions uh Brandon Rogers as an FFBP Hall of Famer. I'm telling yeah. you, man, the FFBPs are one hundred percent. The way you're going to win your matchup, I I I I fully believe that. After the stacks, you get that FFVP. He's golden. Now, finish up on this, Dave. Multi-positional players, um, I, I I think it's huge. Um, and and again, just so you know, this is you know we're we're talking about DFS cheat codes, DFS strategies. We'll also be doing a video about season long as well, uh, breaking down those positions. Uh, but multi-position eligibility come on the cheap i know dfs you might say ah it's not a big deal it kind of is because you can flex around your lineup so much because eric haas okay he he was multi-position eligible okay yep. and, and and that really helped you know because if i'm not mistaken he was catcher eligible um catcher and first base i'm pretty sure um if i'm not mistaken for for, for a little bit anyway uh yeah. which really helped at that position yeah, Max Muncy's one guy I always look at that you could play oh, first. Oh, yeah, all over the infield. Outfield. Like, yeah, he's all over the infield and some outfield. So guys like that do get very valuable in you being able to get creative, especially if there's some of the FFVPs where you can stick them in spots. Middle infield, you don't get a lot of power out of and you don't get a lot of production off, um, at times. So if you're able to stick some some flexible players into there and then build your outfield and your power positions, yeah, it's absolutely good. The other things I look at, Tony, you might as well, um, you know, Weather, weather is a yep. big thing. One of the favorite things I type in at the beginning of the day, especially if they're playing at home, is wind blowing out in Wrigley. And I just got to check it out because if the wind's blowing out there, we're stacking both teams potentially. Yep. And we had some games last year, both in double digits at Wrigley. Also, look at the weather uh, as far as heat goes, right? Uh, when Humidity. the heat hits here, 
right humidity too. When it hits here up in the northeast, oh. balls fly out. They know runs go up, and on average, expected runs per game go up almost one per game when it's over 90 degrees. So you're looking at this is Bank Park, and that's the other point I'll say. Ballparks, ballparks are the key. Rockies Huge. number one hitting in Coors Field last year, 24th outside of Coors Field. So it's hard to you know stack them outside of home, but at home you were you were lining them up. CJ Crone and the boys, um, but. Again, look at ballparks, look at weather. They're going to be very important on those days. And pitching usually rules in the early part of the season. So that's something. Now, they don't get as many innings sometimes in the early part of the season, but they're usually ahead of the hitters coming out of spring training. Yeah, it's great, great, great call about the weather. That's huge because obviously, you know, not just wind or not just humidity, but also rain because last thing you want is half of your stack out because yeah. of a delay, or especially the pitcher. Right, yep. and I'm telling you right now, rule of thumb for me: if there's a chance of any kind of thunderstorm action or anything like that, I'm out on that pitcher. I, I'd rather play it safe because once you put them in, you're done. It's, there's no changing. It is what it is, and and you're screwed if you're spending, you know, eight to nine thousand um, dollars on that top pitcher, and he's he doesn't pitch, you're lost. You're, you're it's over. You're you're out. So um, that's one thing that I, I think is ex extremely important. Adam says. Who would be your guys' top picks this season coming up? Uh, Adam, that will be coming up soon. Uh, yeah. You know, we're, we're going to break down each position uh, for season-long fantasy, and we'll break down our top fives uh, at each position and our sleepers, obviously, and, and our boss. But, Dave, listen, uh, again, MLB DFS cheat codes. This is how you build uh, a winning lineup. Any final thoughts before we get out of here and, and, and we preview the NL East? Yeah, one last one is – Big rule changes this year, I think, actually add base running back into this equation in DFS. Steals are always attractive, but they're hard to get. One of the big guys last year, Julio Rodriguez, obviously, you know, came mm. on the scene and, and lit things up. But he was a huge stolen base guy before he started popping with the home runs in the middle of the season. So uh, watch out for some stolen bases this year, really building your DFS lineup, because I think we're going to see a lot, lot, lot more with the new bases, the new pitching rules and the pickoff rules. I think the you know, base running is going to come back to be a heavy part of this game. It's Steals in many, many DFS games are high value. That's a great point. I love I love stolen bases. I love that I love part it. of the game. I really do. Um, you know, we we watched it here in 2008 with with Davy Lo Davy Lowe's was a master uh at first base. You know, he he knew when to run, when not to run. You know, we grow up in an era when we watch Run Ricky Run, Vince yep. Coleman, Jose Reyes when he could stay healthy. I mean, these dudes were just phenomenal, man. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh but again, uh, Javon Hong, Javon, he said, when it comes to DFS, do you guys think there's a value stacking your lineup with bad teams? Last year, we had the Pirates, A's, and Rangers. That's a good point. You know, there is I, value. Because there, yeah. there, there's a, a lot of value in that. There, there is. And, and the reason there's value more than anything is because it's going to be under-owned. And you know, when yes. you're in DFS, Javon, you've done it so many years um, that you got to be able to have some low percentage owned guys to win uh, DFS, especially GPP. I don't stack them as much in cash games. Um, I, I try and really, you know, stick to my better teams and better expected total run values. But in GPPs, I absolutely think there's value in stacking bad teams. No, nah, it's a good point, especially teams like I, the, the Pirates, man. Listen, I, when they were facing when, it, when they were in a good matchup, I, it was yeah. hard not to stack them. It was. Yeah. It was, it was, they, they made yeah, me they some, some hitters, last year right? especially sure. when O'Neill Cruz came up. Yep. Um, hot on the scene. I, I I thought they, you know, they were valuable sometimes. And before they traded Vogelbach, he was doing pretty good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was a, a lot, a lot of good value. A lot of good value. But there it is, man. Winning your DFS lineup each and every week. Make sure follow these tips. Add your own tips in. Again, follow us on YouTube at Wind Daily Sports. Uh, make sure you follow us at Wind Daily Sports. You can follow Dave right there up top. You can follow me right there up top. You see that, you know, on Instagram, whether it be on Twitter. Uh, and listen, engage. Any questions, let us know. Put it in the comments. We'll answer them. We'd be glad to take them. Uh, but we got more videos coming up. Uh, we're going to preview the NL East coming up when it, from a fantasy perspective. Uh, so if you're watching this video in about five minutes, stay tuned. We talk at NL East. If not, catch us on YouTube. Everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, and let's cash some tickets.